Chapter Three of Nip and Tuck by a Self-Made Man. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter Three shows how Nip got his first order and why Tuck shadowed him. Many of the messengers and younger clerks employed in the neighboring brokers' offices on the third floor of the New Era building thought the two boy brokers, as they were called, fair marks for their sarcasm. Augustus Totten a junior clerk in Redstone's office, who knew Nip when he was a messenger for Billings and Company, thought it would be fine fun to guy Nicholas. So three days after the new brokers had opened up shop, Totten, followed by a couple of his cronies, employed by Green and Brown, respectively, taking advantage of the absence of their bosses, knocked at Nip's door, and in answer to, Come in, walked solemnly into Nicholas's sheep-shearing den. You're Mr. Nip, aren't you? asked Totten with a sly grin that at once put the young broker on his guard. "'Yes, that's my name. What can I do for you?' "'You're a stockbroker, I believe,' went on Totten with a slight sneer. "'I guess that's the way my sign reads,' replied Nip, wondering what was coming. "'Well, as we notice you're just starting in business, we thought we'd drop in and give you an order apiece to kind of encourage you.' Nip now tumbled to the racket. They intended to ask him to purchase some kind of fictitious stock for them, and then give him the grand laugh. "'Really, it's very kind of you to think of me in this way,' he said with a glance which took in the grinning trio. "'But the fact is, I don't do business with office boys.' "'What?' gasped Totten, falling back a foot or two, while the others began to look exceedingly foolish, not to say indignant. "'I don't receive orders to buy or sell from boys.' office boys in particular you might call on mr tuck next door perhaps he will oblige you who are you calling an office boy snorted augustus totten swelling up with righteous indignation why you're mr redstone's office boy aren't you no i'm not mr redstone's office boy i'm mr redstone's margin clerk if anyone should happen to ask you snarled augustus now as mad as a hornet well don't get mad about it chuckled Nip, satisfied that he had turned the tables on them. You had better scamper back to your offices before your bosses get on to your being away from your posts without leave. I have a great mind to bust you in the snoot for your impertinence, bellowed Totten. I wouldn't try it, Augustus, if I were you. You might get hurt, and then Redstone would fire you like a shot. Totten took a step forward with a threatening gesture, but Nip never moved a hair. The young broker's nerve and coolness overawed Totten, and he thought better of his half-formed intention. "'You just wait, that's all,' he said, moving toward the door, through which his associates had already passed, glad to escape further humiliation. "'We'll fix you for this,' Then he shook his fist at Nicholas and slammed the door after him, while Nip sat back in his chair and indulged in a quiet laugh at the expense of his visitors. While the grin was yet on his face there came a knock on the door— and before he could answer, the knob was turned, and Mr. Billings, his late boss, walked in. "'Hello, Nip!' Billings exclaimed as he walked over and shook hands with his former employee. "'You've quite a neat little office here.' "'I think so, sir. I'm very glad to see you. Won't you sit down?' Mr. Billings deposited his two hundred pounds of avertipoi in a convenient chair. "'Done any business yet?' asked his visitor. "'No, sir. Perhaps you could drive a lamb or two my way.' I've a fine sharp pair of shears in my desk waiting for use. Have you? laughed the big broker. I guess I'd better have stayed away. Why so, sir? Because I came here to give you a little order as an encouragement. But since you've mentioned your shears, it's kind of frightened me. And the broker smiled good-naturedly. I guess my shears wouldn't hurt an experienced sheep like yourself, grinned Nip. But, sir, joking aside, I shall be very glad to execute any commission you may see fit to entrust to me. All right, Nip. I want to buy as much COD stock as I can get a hold of. And as I don't want to be identified in the transaction, I thought of you, among others, who might be able to assist me. I understand, sir. Go out on the curb and gather in as near sixty-five as you can get it. All the COD offered. I'll do it, sir, replied Nip, reaching for his hat which lay on the top of his desk. The stock will be paid for on delivery at the Treadwell Bank. Understand? Yes, sir. Very well. Now let me see how much you can get of the stock, and whether you will succeed in doing as well for me as the other two brokers to whom I have given a similar commission. 
Thus speaking, Mr. Billings rose to his feet. "'Just wait a moment or two until I get out of the building,' said the big broker, as he shook hands with the boy at parting. Tuck was just unlocking the door of his office when Billings came out of Nip's sanctum. He recognized the big broker as Nip's late boss, and he wondered if Billings had come around to give Nip a lift in a business way. "'It's just possible such is the fact,' he mused as he let himself inside. Tuck rushed to his own door and looked out just in time to see Nip vanishing in the direction of the elevator. "'He's in a great hurry, all right,' thought Tuck. "'I wonder what's in the wind. Going to execute an order for his late respected boss, I'll bet. Well, his business does not seem to be flowing my way in overwhelming quantity. I'll follow Nip and see if I can get on to what he's after. It may be a tip for me, and nothing would suit me better than to make a raise out of Nicholas.' He chuckled softly to himself as he relocked the door and skated down the corridor just in time to see Nip catch the elevator down. A second elevator came shooting down a moment later, and he boarded it as quick as a wink. When Tuck reached the street entrance of the office building, he saw Nip steering for Broad Street as fast as he could go. Tuck shadowed his friend up to the busy and noisy group of street brokers who stood about on the opposite side of the street from the exchange. Then he watched him tackle several of the curb dealers until he saw one make a memorandum on his pad, motion to a messenger boy, and send it off to his office. He's buying stock, sure enough, murmured Tuck. But what stock is it? He made a mental note of the broker who had made the deal, and then continued to watch Nip's movements. The boy did business with several of the brokers, and finally Tuck observed him in conversation with a particular friend of his. This young man also made a note of some transaction and sent it off by messenger. As soon as Nip had made the rounds of the various groups, he started for Wall Street. Then Tuck slid up alongside his friend. Hello, Mason, he said. Haven't seen you in a dog's age. How are you? Fine as silk, Tuck. How is the world wagging with you? Tip top. Doing much business today? Nothing to brag of. Just made my best sale a few moments ago. Three thousand COD. Don't mention it, will you? Buyer may not want it known, you know. I did not mean to let it slip out, for these things are confidential. Don't worry. I'm as dumb as an oyster on the subject. That's right. They talked a few moments longer, then Tuck bade him goodbye. Slipping around the edge of the crowd, he began looking for the other men who had made deals with Nip. At length he recognized one, and stepping up to him, said, You've got some COD, I believe? Not a share, replied the broker. I was told you had said Tuck in a tone of conviction. "'Who told you?' asked the broker sharply. "'You know Mason, don't you?' "'You can go back and tell Mason I just sold out all I had, understand?' "'All right,' answered Tuck, driving toward the outskirts of the group. Then he saw another of the brokers who had done business with Nip, and by adroit methods managed to find out that he too had just got rid of all his COD. "'It's clear that Nicholas is buying all the COD he can gobble.' and it's equally clear he's acting for Billings and Company. Now, Billings and Company are brokers for Hoffman House, who is president of the COD. I read in the Sun a week ago that the road had been maneuvering some time to get a hold of the X, Y, and Z line, which would give them a direct connection with the city. It looks as if the consolidation was about to materialize. I'll just keep my eye on COD for a day or two and see what happens. If there's an upward movement... I'll sell out my PD and Q, which is now six points to the good, and go the whole hog on COD. Thus soliloquizing to himself, Tuck returned to his office, chuckling softly to himself as he glanced at Nip's name on room 33, while he was inserting the key into his own door. Nip would certainly have a fit if he knew I'd got on to his little business. End of chapter 3